Dom Barber grudgingly admitted a correlation between price and cost. In almost Marshallian terms, he conceded that Ricardo went only a very little way, too far in downplaying the influence of scarcity and in overstating the importance of labor as one factor among several. The conclusion might very well be drawn that expenditure of labor is one circumstance which exerts a powerful influence on the value of many goods, always remembering that labor is not an ultimate cause, for an ultimate cause must be common to all the phenomena of value, but a particular and intermediate cause. Ricardo himself only went a very little way over the proper limits as I have shown. He knew right well that his law of value was only a particular law he knew. For instance, that the value of scarce goods rests on quite another principle. He only erred in so far as he very much overestimated the extent to which his law is valid and practically ascribed to it a validity almost universal. The consequence is that later on he forgot almost entirely the little exceptions he had rightly made but too little considered at the beginning of his work, and often spoke of his law as if it were really a universal law of value. Indeed, but for deviations caused by friction and the time element, the correlation between production, cost, and price would be quite close. If what is practically inconceivable production were carried on in ideal circumstances, unfettered by limitations of place and time with no friction, with the most perfect knowledge of the position of human wants requiring satisfaction and without any disturbing disturbing cha changes of wants, stocks, or techniques, then the original productive powers would, with ideal and mathematical exactitude, be invested in the most rem rem remunerative employments uh, and the law of costs. So far as we can speak of such a law would hold in ideal completeness. The complementary groups of goods from which in the long run the finished goods proceeds, proceeds would maintain exactly the same value and price at all stages of pro the process, the commodity would be exactly equal to costs. These costs to their costs and so on, back to the last original productive powers from which ultimately all goods come. The assumption here sounds quite similar to uh, the Miesian theoretical construct of the evenly rotating economy, which we shall discuss below. Bohm Borwick went to on to elaborate on the friction and time as causes for deviation from the ideal model. The first of these disturbing causes I may call by the general name of friction. Almost invariably there is some hindrance, great or small, permanent or temporary, to due investment of the original productive powers in the employments and forms of consumption which are the most remunerative at the time, in consequence the provision for wants and like, likewise the prices are somewhat unsymmetrical. Sometimes it is that individual, bran individual branches of wants are relatively more am amply supplied than others. But sometimes it may be that groups of productive materials successively transformed till they are changed at la last into the finished commodity are not equally valued at all stages of the process. Here he used the analogy of a stream to illustrate bottlenecks as various stages of the production process. In practical life, such frictional disturbances are innumerable. At no moment and in no branch of production are they entirely absent, and thus it is that the law of cost is recognized as a law that is only approximately valid, a law riddled through and through with exceptions. These innumerable exceptions, small and great, are the inexhaustible source of the undertaker's profits, but also of the undertaker's losses. The second disturbing cause is the lapse of time. The weeks, months, years which much stretch between the inception of the original productive powers and the presentation of their finished and final product, the difference of time in exerting a far-reaching influence on the very 
valuation of goods makes a normal difference between the value of the productive groups standing at different points of the production process, and is therefore a difference to be kept quiet, quite distinct from the unsymmetrical divergence, divergences caused by frictional disturbances. The time element is the subject of chapter 3 below, in which time preference is incorporated into our mutualistic mutualist version of the labor theory. As for friction, all scarcity rents can arguably be classed under this heading, and Bohm Barwick's treated treatment of cost and various forms of friction as simultaneously co-determining co co influences on value is questionable at best. It is much more useful and informative to treat labor or cost as pr the primary influence on normal value, i.e. equilibrium price given elasticity, and to say that value deviates from this norm to the extent that friction comes into the picture, Maurer's dog argued ably, ably that a key difference between the classical political economists and the subjectivists was their opinion on the level of the of generality necessary for an adequate theory of value. Much of the disagreement over the Ricardian paradigm stems from a difference of opinion on whether the exceptions of Ricardo admitted to the law of value were sufficient to invalidate it. For Dobb, obviously the answer was no. In political economy and capitalism, he, he detailed the simplified assumptions of Marx's value theory and various exceptions to it resulting from scarcity or differing co compositions of capital. These exceptions were held to be fatal by the marginalists and were the onus uh, of Bohm Barwerk's criticism of Marx. But all abstractions remain only approximations to reality. This is their essential nature, and it is no criticism of the theory of value merely to say that this is so. Whether such assumptions are permissible is, or, or no is a matter of the type of question. The nature of the problem which, with which the principle is designed to deal, the criticism only becomes valid if it shows that the implicit assumptions preclude the generalization from sustain, sustaining these corollaries which it, it is employed to sustain. It is too seldom remembered today that the concern of classical political economy was with what one may term the macroscopic problems of economic society and only very secondarily with microscopic problems in the shape of the mo movements of particular commodity prices. Dobb compared Marx's general law of value as a first approxim approximation and the second approximations adjusting it for deviations resulting from scarcity and differences in organic composition of capital to the successive approximations of law of projectiles in physics made necessary by wind resistance and other countervailing influences.